Somebody, for the love of God, give my boy Reiner a hug, because season four of Attack on Titan continues to push him closer and closer to the edge, and it just makes me upset. I mean, I'm still going to watch it, but I, I just get really sad when I do. Hey everyone, it's Too Fast Movie. I'm your host, Abraham. With me once again, my co-host with the most, Ben Collins. Ben, we're going to get right into it. What did you think of Season 4, Episode 3 of Attack on Titan? Quite a doozy, this this one. Yeah, um, I'm not going to lie. This one was a lot more intense than I thought it was going to be. I'm just going to say... First of all, fantastic episode if you haven't seen it. The editing just mwah, to uh ugh, it's so disorienting in a good way because Reiner is a very disoriented person throughout his early life. And personally just stepping into Reiner's shoes for this episode and really seeing and getting to recontextualize season 1 and all of the events that happened to these Marleyan youth uh honestly Parts of it were bone chilling, and I'm sad. I'm yeah. sad. I'm sad for the guy. From from a manga perspective, this this whole thing took place a little bit longer. It took place over the course of maybe two chapters, maybe three uh, in the manga. But to your point, I think the fast pacing actually did it justice because, like you said, it played into Reiner's psyche a lot. This disorienting. He's been through so much, and now seeing it all back to back to back to back to back leading up to the moment that he well, we'll talk about that more uh as we go on it's a very sensitive uh topic and we will give a tr- trigger warning when we do approach that subject but yeah overall a, a really great episode now um like i said this episode is going to deal with very sensitive topic the very sensitive topic of suicide so please uh, click away if that is not something that you wish to listen to And so, without further ado, we're going to get into today's episode, but before we begin, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Leave us a like and a comment. It helps us grow out in the long term, and uh, we upload videos every week, so you never have a reason not to come back to the Scope channel. And spoilers ahead for this episode of Attack on Titan, titled The Doors of Hope. So, let's first talk about Reiner's backstory. I mean, that's the obvious thing. Uh, We learn that he became a warrior so that his Eldian mother and Marleyan father could be together. We see that he is one of the worst performing warrior candidates among a group of young Zeke, Annie, Bertold, Peek, Marcel, and Galliard. And it turns out the only reason he's a candidate at all is because Marcel swayed the top brass so that his brother Galliard would be safe. Among many moments from inside the walls, which we will talk about more in a moment we see a conversation between Reiner and Aaron. In this scene, Reiner gives words of encouragement to Aaron and tells him to keep moving forward. And while the scene plays out, present-day Reiner cocks a gun and points it in his mouth, only stopped by an unsuspecting Falco overheard behind a wall. That's that's the most chilling moment. Um, Just the rawness of it, the the sound that he made as he put it out and really like collapsed in his breath, the saliva coming off of the barrel. It was, it's and like going back to the editing, like just even the way that we cut into that scene, it's throughout the entire episode, we're experiencing these really quick cuts and uh, transitions that are just meant to disorient as we go through these series of flashbacks. Mm -hmm. And, it takes us from, I forget which flashback it was. I believe it was after they, after he picks up Aaron in the field and has this mo, like has this really high moment of just being a very decent human being, to one of these devils, as he's been calling them for his entire life. That we then get that really nasty transition over to this moment. It's it's because he's I mean, think back to I was thinking back. There's another scene that I didn't talk about, which is the scene in which the they're talking to a father who left behind his three children um, on the initial attack. And later on, Bertold actually 
wonders why he would commit suicide after telling us that story. It's because he was waiting probably, he's racked with guilt and just needed a moment to release. And I think it's telling that that was in the episode because they're paralleled. I mean, Reiner has never had the opportunity to fully digest and to really t- grapple with what happened on the island. He's yeah. never really had a time for judgment. He's never had a moment to be honest because he never can be. The people on the island, they're devils, and the people that are in Marley don't necessarily want the best for him, but it's stuck between a rock and a hard place, as it is. Yeah, and I think that plays into the weird... <clears throat> well, I suppose it isn't really weird, but we know that his time on the island affected him in the way that he sees morality and the way that he sees this entire larger conflict that has rooted his entire people's existence in Marley mm-hmm. as probably if he didn't have to fight this war he probably could have lived out the rest of his days in the walls yeah it's it's also super upsetting because the only reason why he wanted to do something was so that his mother and father could live together ben he has that conversation with his father and he doesn't want, he has another family, doesn't want anything to do with Reiner or his mother. And then at least like the last hope that he has is like, oh, well, at least I'm a Marleyan warrior. At least I'm the best of the best. And then Marcel is just like, yeah, you weren't even supposed to be here. It's like it. he did all of this for nothing. Yeah. And I think that's a major reason why we see Reiner break in this episode. Not only Marcel's death, but the fact that he should really have died in Marcel's place. The entire plan was based around Marcel's leadership. Mm -hmm. And for them to lose that, and then Reiner to be the only person still wanting to push on with the mission, and keep in mind he's not necessarily pushing on the with the mission because it's the right thing to do for marley but because if he goes home there's nothing for him there yeah so there is kind of this you can almost see it as a death wish you can almost see it as escapism no matter what, he just does not want to have to deal with the repercussions of going back. Because guess what? The second that he goes back, Annie, at least, maybe not Berthold, because Berthold is just what, excuse me, was just a very kind soul and would never really have turned on Reiner in that way. Mm-hmm. But Annie definitely would have sold him out as like, he he's not supposed to be here. Yeah. Totally. So would've. there was no real, there, there's no real escape for Reiner except to continue on with this mission and well, stay on this side of the ocean. They they make the comment early on in the episode. There's a fantastic shot where Berthold and Reiner are looking at the wall of the internment zone, and Reiner makes the sentiment, "I have 13 years to be a hero," and then they pan over to show that Aaron and Aaron and uh, Armin are on the other side of the wall, like that do out like two ends of the you know the same yeah. point and i think it's interesting that titan powers in and of itself is a death sentence you're basically committing that at, in at least 13 years you will be eaten alive a horrifying existence to make so he, his life is just filled with all of these unending just slaps in the face and i think that actually ties into the double meaning of the title of the episode doors of hope um one that could actually be open the possibility of a brighter future or is it one that just continually slammed in your face and for a lot of the time reiner in the episode thinks it's the former or the latter it's just a never-ending series of doors that will never open but it isn't until that Falco finally, he hears Falco's voice that we really get to see that he needs those kids as much as those kids need him. I mean, looking back on the last episode when he was reaching out, 
I at, at initially I don't know why, but I was like, oh, he's just like remembering because they look a lot like them, or the dynamic is similar. No, he always feels like he's at the bottom of the barrel. He always feels like there's never any hope in the world. And then these kids are that door of hope, something better. Also, f- fuel for the conversation that happened between Falco and Reiner in the last episode. Maybe that's why he told Falco everything that he did about saving Gabby. I mean, the layers in the show. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, And it's interesting. We were talking about the fact that, uh, Excuse me, I'm forgetting the writer of the manga's name. Um, that would be uh, Isayama. Thank you. But he, for the most part, in interviews has stated that he only writes in the moment. He doesn't really plan things too far out, which is makes this kind of writing and this kind of callback, especially when we take a look at just what he did with Annie, so m- just yeah absolutely crazy let's get into that part of the episode because there's some stuff that we did skip over um in the events that happened on the island so let's talk about that some more the first is the scene directly after marcel is eaten by ymir uh we finally hear annie's true feelings about the war and the mission and we get an explanation for why she's so distant to reiner and Bertold in season one she was actually forced into coming inside the walls, choked out by a bloodied and bruised Reiner. We also see a scene of Annie following Kenny the Ripper to get more intel on the founding Titan, and we learn that the attack on Wal Maria was done to smoke out the founding Titan. So, a lot of recontextualization for the events of season one, and like you were saying, Ben, fantastic work on giving Annie character development in such a short amount of time. I mean... Because we don't, we know that, Ann, we never knew Annie as a Marleyan. We never knew her true feelings on the war, and we never know, we never knew how she felt in relation to the mission to reclaim the Founding Titan. Now that we get that, we can see she has a very telling line of Marleyans and Eldians, both are scum. I don't care. And I remember she, there was a time where Annie has a father. Um, who's sick back in uh, in Marley. Reiner made mention of that way back in season three, I think. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I'm just glad that they were able to do this in the short amount of time that they did. I'm glad it wasn't cut out. I really hope that we do see more Annie. I kind of hope that she's still alive, actually, even for just the sake of seeing her character a little bit more, because there's other questions that i have just about season one that we never really got covered in this episode we don't know what her mission was when she originally got caught and was leading all those other uh, smaller titans on other attacks mm-hmm. on outside the walls we don't know exactly what was happening there why things were going down the way they did what the goal was Perhaps the goal was just to get Aaron, but they wouldn't have known that Aaron was the founding Titan at that point. But but they would know that Aaron is a Titan, and that's enough. I mean, if you're if you're the if you're them, and all of a sudden Aaron transforms into a Titan out of nowhere, and you're like, who the hell is this kid? You would probably do everything you could to track him down, pin him down, question him, see what he knows. That might lead to another bread trail. They, I don't think they knew that he had the founding Titan. Well, that's exactly what they ended up doing in um, season two. So, well, yeah, because they, I think just because he is a Titan shifter, and that's important enough. One of the nine is just randomly here. Whether what's uh, what's their deal? Yeah, no, I think that capturing Eric, it made perfect sense. I'm just curious as to what the dynamic was between her, Reiner, and Berthold before she got captured Mm. like there's definitely in her mind now knowing that she had backup and that she didn't even want to be there was she like where the fuck's my backup during that last fight yeah or was she like i'm gonna do this solo because these other two guys are on comp i mean she did make that comment of like oh while you guys were playing footsie with your new friends i actually did the work and went to go track down kenny and get all this intel yeah so what her role is, we're not sure, but 
that uh, a small little thing that we just wanted to touch on before uh, we continue on in the episode. Let's jump to the end of the episode, probably the most fascinating part. Um, we see that Falco makes friends with one of the wounded soldiers in the Eldian hospital. Uh, this man was also featured in the last episode. He was a man who did not have his leg um, and fell backwards on his crutch. The man claims that he lied about having amnesia because he doesn't want to return to his family. He also laments about the consequences of war. You know, who would partake if they knew what hell lay on the other side? As he goes on, he makes a distinction between those that act due to their circumstances and those that push themselves. Only the ones who push their own backs see something beyond the hell. Maybe it's hope. Maybe another hell. The only ones who know for sure are the ones who keep moving forward. A very interesting conversation um, for a random Eldian soldier. Um, Now, we're going to... If you don't want to know who this person is and you feel content not knowing, get out of here. Super, yeah. super dumb spoiler. Um, honestly, I can't believe if you don't know who that is, I, f- I personally think you might not be looking at the clues hard enough. Um, hey, hey, hey. I don't know. Some people enjoy being surprised. That's true. Some so. people enjoy. So and if you enjoy being surprised, get the fuck out of here. Get out. We're going to. We're about we're to say spill it. the bag on this one. Guys, it's our boy. Yeah. It's Aaron Yeager. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, the conversation about freedom. Aaron was super big on freedom. Like, that was his whole thing. Like, being caged inside the walls. That was a super big trait for him. So that was the biggest tip. But then the eyes, those piercing blue crazy man eyes. Yeah. And you can go back and take a look at some other hints as well. When we first see this character in the previous episode, he's wearing the armband on the wrong arm. Yeah. And he needs to be <laughs> corrected on where he's supposed to be putting it. Which um, no Eldian would ever get that wrong. That's something that even the children know. Indoctrined into them at that age yeah that that was yeah. a dead giveaway. it's honestly i will say it was a good move on their part to put aaron undercover this way because him being half blown to pieces he can just regenerate his limbs when it, it comes time mm-hmm. like he's going to be okay no matter what they do whether aaron likes missing an eye and a leg i mean technically he's, he's been missing limbs beforehand so he's familiar with this type of pain mm-hmm. but that's up for debate that being said looking at that and then again just the implications with the editing on this the fact that the most recent scene we see in the backdrop is one that is directly comparing reiner to aaron and then this new character is regurgitating a lot of reiner's own ideology that he instows aaron with keep in mind that in season one and parts of season two, Aaron looked up to Reiner mm-hmm. so much. Yeah. Reiner was the one person that was telling Aaron to keep going no matter what. Right. And well, and it, it's crazy because while Reiner was saying that, he was really talking about himself. About the mentality of like, I need to keep moving forward because I need to see this through. Hopefully there's hope on the other side. Maybe another hell. But I gotta do what I gotta do. It was a sentiment that he shared when he first revealed to Aaron that he was the Armored Titan and Bertold was a Colossal Titan. He said something like, I've been on this hell for five years. I don't even know what's right anymore. But all I know is I'm a warrior and I got to do what I got to do. And then he transforms. So they're obviously drawing the parallel between Reiner and Aaron. Which then brings in the preview for the next episode. So in the preview... The Liberia Festival is finally underway. We're introduced to the Tibber family, and verbatim, this is what the text of the uh, the translation says. Reiner has a surprise waiting for him. Um, I I I hope it's a good surprise, but um, <laughs> here's the thing: the shot that they gave of Reiner, like looking like like he was like like he had just seen a ghost. Oh no! Shit's gonna ha- Shit's gonna go down in this episode. We're... He's probably gonna meet Aaron. I mean, that's naturally just gonna happen, anyways. And now that Falco 
is like this little like <laughs> little little bridge between the both of them. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, uh, Ro- hey, uh, Falco, who's your new friend? Oh God! Mm, yeah, I wonder if he will be able to recognize Aaron right off the bat because keep in mind that Aaron is heavily disguised right now. The only hint that we really get mm-hmm. is a couple things off. Otherwise, physically, he doesn't really look too much like himself, which is the reason why we had to post a spoiler warning anyway. I don't know. I mean, in the for us, it might. But like, if imagine in real life, like you see someone grow up like four years later. You haven't seen someone in four years. Would you, you be still able recognize to, them? Yeah. Right. You would still be able to do that. I know I f- by our by our logic, we don't necessarily discern animated <laughs> facial features we don't discern them the same way but what, in you the mean universe... that's not built into my frontal lobe <laughs> being able to distinguish anime people yeah the the characteristics of the show they're obviously how like how am i gonna know circle? who my waifu is abraham <laughs> um this is an important skill <laughs> but look the episode next week is going to be just i can already tell it's gonna be a hell of an episode Especially Whoa. if Reiner and Aaron are going to collide, and the festival is going to be happening. Ooh, ooh, boy! I'm excited. Well, yep, yeah, that's uh, that's about it for this episode of Too Fast Movie. Uh, as always, uh, I'm Abraham. This is Ben Collins. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications, and subscribe to YouTube.com/backslash/Scope Productions. You can also find us on any place you really find podcasts: Spotify, Amazon Music. Apple Music, just look up Return to the Movie and you will find us. Thank you very much, guys, and it's Too Fast Movie.